All right. All right. Uh, so we left off at this point, kind of you know doing some more shaping, right? We kind of made some horns here. Um, we even put eyes in there, right? Now remember, one of the things that you could start to do is you could actually separate those eyes out. We just kind of built them as part of this single object, right? But you could separate stuff, right? Also, remember, you can relabel stuff in Outliner. So if I go up to the Outliner up here, right, my body is this cube. So if I double click on it, right, I can call this, you know, uh, I don't know, troll body <laughs> or biped, right? Biped, whatever we want to call it. Biped, body, right? There we go. And you see that's kind of been named. That's kind of neat. Uh, one of the other things I like to do, which you can actually do, is you can organize stuff into collections, right? See how there's this collection up here? If I was just to uh, say right click in here, right? So just in the outliner, right click. There's an option called new collection. And I can create collection two. And if I want, I can actually just left click drag my camera and light down into that collection. That way I've got kind of collections for say my geometry and collections for my camera and light. You don't have to do that of course, but you can if you want to. It's pretty easy. Just right click in the outliner, new collection, right? Uh, and then you can just drag and drop whatever object you want in there, right? Just left click drag and you can move it to whatever collection you want. So it's kind of neat, right? Kind of cool. Uh, you know, I could even turn the light on, but turn the visibility off of the collection as a whole. Um, so remember, you can create collections which are kind of um, kind of groups, right? They're kind of groups a little bit. Um, and you can just organize stuff a little bit in there if you want to. All right. So I just figured I'd kind of briefly show that a little bit. Now, in this case, I do need a second piece of geometry here to get us started, right? Um, and this is going to allow me to show you a couple of features, which at this point we should start to get you guys to see. Um, one is I can actually go in here and I could take these eyes and I could separate them, right? I could separate them. So if I go to three for face mode, right? Three for face mode. Remember, I could select a single face. And remember, there is in the select menu, right? Linked, select linked. By default, that's actually right bracket, right? There is actually a default quick key for select link. It's a right bracket. I just use it enough that I kind of was like, right brackets, way the hook over there. Spacebar, right? I just decided to use spacebar for mine. So I did redo that one to be a different one. But if you go to select linked, it's right there. Uh, it is the right bracket key. Right brackets kind of in the, uh, right above enter, right? It's kind of, it kind of looks like a parentheses, but it's kind of square, right? Um, it's kind of right above enter, kind of right over right O and P, right below backspace. You kind of see them. They look a little bit like parentheses. But select linked, remember, selects just the linked polygons, the polygons that are directly connected to the one we have selected here, right? So that's what's cool about select linked. Um, Maya's version of it's connected, right? So, uh, select connected. Same thing, different name, right? So select linked is cool. We've seen it a bit on previous projects as well, right? So that's kind of not new for most of you. But we haven't used it as much lately, right? We've just been building the body. We haven't really needed it that much. So remember, select linked allows you to just, just to select the polygons directly connected to this one, right? Remember, this is technically was a separate sphere, right? That in no way is bridged or merged at the vertex level to the rest of it, even though it's one object. That's what's cool about select connected, right? If I did this for, say, the body, see how it selects just the body? So select connected or select linked is really cool for that stuff, right? It's in the select menu, select linked. I change it to spacebar because I find that more convenient, but it, it's technically right bracket. It's technically right bracket, right? Okay. Now, once you have that selected, if I want to separate this into its own object, I can, right? If I right click, remember, right clicking in Blender, particularly if you're using industry compatible, um, brings up your face, your context menus, right? If you're in object mode, it'll be options for your object uh, to, uh, stuff. If it's faces, it's face options. So when I right click, you see how it brings up tools that I can use for my faces. And we see way down towards the bottom is separate, right? Way towards the bottom of this right click menu is separate. And you see you could do it by selection, which is what we want to do here. You could do it by loose parts. That would te technically work as well without having to select anything. You can even do it by material. So if you have a material, like to say, if you took a bunch of objects that had separate materials or separate objects and joined them, you can actually separate them back out by their materials again. In this case, since I've got a specific selected set of faces, I can separate selection. 
And what that does, you see how it actually makes that into its own object? So if I go to 4, you'll notice the eyeballs are their own object now. And you notice how your actual modifiers transfer with it, which is actually really, really cool, right? So remember, you just right-click um, when you have faces selected, and if you uh, right-click go to separate, you can separate them by that selection. That makes them their own object, right? And you see how now there's an, an actual new object in there. There's a second object in your outliner. And what's really cool, like I said, is your mirror and your subdivision modifiers come with it, which is really neat. So that's kind of one neat way to kind of get your eyeballs to be their own separate thing. We're going to eventually have them be part of the gear uh, layer that I'm going to start up with here. So now what I want to do is I want to start to kind of build some clothing, right? Probably give this character maybe some shorts uh, and maybe kind of like a little strap going up around here. We'll do a little bit more uh, later this week with that as well. But I figured it would be a good start to kind of get us going. So I'm going to go back to the body, right? So um, four for object mode, right? Four for object mode. And you can just left click on the body. Um, you can always select in the outliner too, right? But of course you can click on it in the viewport as long as you're in object mode, right? Four for object mode. So now I'm going to go to three for face mode so I can select faces. Now there's a couple of different tools here. Heck, I'm probably going to put an extra loop in here for the thigh. Maybe hit R for scale a little bit. Remember, Alt-C for loop cut. And then you have to do a little bit of scaling here just to kind of shape it more. Just wanted a little bit more geometry in the thigh there. Um, you always want a little more geometry where you're going to have more animation. Um, but since we're going to uh, apply our subdivision modifier again one more time, we'll kind of have a lot of, that we need there, and we could add a smidge more if we need to. Uh, right now, we're still just focusing on the primary forms and shaping, uh, while still having kind of core good edge loops. Uh, not exhaustive of our edge loops you'll ever do on a model, but it's a lot of good, important ones um, that are, are, will work fairly well. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to build some kind of clothing. Now, believe it or not, the shorts geometry really will mimic the geometry of the legs and kind of hips area. So in this case, we don't really need to use retopo, which of course is capable. We're not going to be doing it for these projects just because of the nature of um, what we do with this class. Um, but um, the actual geometry we already have here is good. We just need it to be a, a new object, right? Now there's a couple of selection tools we can use to kind of approach this, right? So if I go to 2 for edge mode, I can just double left click, right, just to select that edge loop, right? So 2 for edge mode, double left click, selects an edge loop. If I hold down shift and I double left click, shift double left click down here, it selects another edge loop for the leg. You'll see in the select menu that there is an area in select loops called select loop inner region. And what that will do is it'll actually select the faces, or in this case, edges, because it's technically an edge mode, but you hit three and it goes to faces. But by selecting those two edge loops, it gives it kind of a boundary, and it selects within those, right? So it looks at the edge loops, and it looks like at the edge loops, and it says, well, where is there less geometry, right? So if I was to just go to, say, two for edge mode, and I just double left click to select that edge loop, and I go to select loops, select loop inner region, so it just selects the leg. So I went up here and I just did this one, right? Double left click to select that edge loop. Select loops in a region. So that selects the whole lower body. So that's actually really neat. Once again, Blender has great selection tools, right? So in this case, I can just you know select that edge loop and then shift double left click to select that edge loop. And then I can do select loops, loop in a region. There we go. Of course, if you want to just manually select this, you can, right? Uh, of course, you can just hit Q to cycle to circle select. And if you want to just do a quick circle select for those things, you can. It's still pretty fast to do circle select for that stuff, right? But you might find that the inner region is a great shortcut that makes things a little faster. And of course, we can even just select face loops, right? So if we're in three for face mode, if I double left click on a face, but I do it really close to kind of an edge, you see how it selects the face loop in that direction? So I can quickly and easily, just by selecting some face loops here, select it as well. So you see how there's kind of multiple ways to get those selections. Circle select will do it. Just selecting face loops will do it. But 
I wanted to make sure you also see that there is the select loop inner region tool because it's actually quite cool, quite useful. Uh, so just keep that in mind, right? Just getting you some cool extra selection tools. Now, I want to copy these, this geometry, right? I want the original body to still be there, but I want these polygons, so three for face mode again. I want these polygons to be their own object as well. But I don't want to cut, right? If I just separate, it'll leave uh, an empty hole between the body and the legs. I want there to be a body underneath the clothing. So what I can do is I can hit Control D, right? If we go to the mesh menu, you'll see there is duplicate Control D, right? Sometimes you guys might accidentally use Control D instead of Control E, right? You want to extrude stuff, but you don't, right? So you have to remember to be careful. Control D for dog is duplicate. Control E for elephant is extrude. In this case, I want Control D. And you can actually move it around, do all kinds of stuff to it. But if I just hit Control D and then left click, it's actually created a copy of those polygons. Now, they are part of this body still, right? They're part of that object. But there is new geometry there. So of course, just like we did earlier a few moments ago, if I right click, I can go to separate, right, selection. And now you'll see that there is actual geometry that is separate, right? So I kind of move it <laughs> in object mode. You, wouldn't, you shouldn't do that, but I'm going to do it just to show it. See how there's still the original body underneath there? Now what's really cool is I can actually join this to the eyeballs. So as long as I select that one, and then I hold down shift to select the eyeballs, four for object mode, right? Four for object mode. If I right click, you'll see one of the options is join. Object context menu has a join feature, right? And this will take multiple objects and join them into one. And then, of course, I can go up here and I could double left click on that. And I could just say, hey, let's call this body gear. And now you can see I've got a starting point for two separate objects, a body and a gear kind of object. Now, of course, that's selected. So I could hit two for edge mode. And we see some of our edges. Now you'll notice once again that the mirror and subdivision modifiers came with it. So you don't have to reapply those when you do this stuff, right? Blender's really smart about consolidating those things. Now you could of course use retopo tools to do what I'm about to do. But then you have to make sure to turn faces on. You have to turn shrink wrap on. Um, there is a pretty excellent free retopology tool called, called, called speed retopo, right? It's just not something I really want to focus on with this model. Um, I feel like it'll just complicate things for you guys, um, even though it's valuable to my workflow for when I want to do weirder edge loop structures on a character creature or weirder armor flows. It's super useful. But this is meant to make a more complicated biped than our crowd, but it's not meant to be exhaustive of every edge loop you can put on an, any creature or character ever. It's not meant to be exhaustive of every technique that's available to you. But one of the th things that you can do is you can select edges or multiple edges, right? And we can actually extrude those border edges. Now, what is a border edge? Well, in this case, this edge right here, right, is connected to two faces. That's what we call, a, that's a, that's a non-border uh, border edge, right? If I was to extrude that, that would create a face with three edges connected. That's generally for what we do non-manifold. Technically, these could be considered non-manifold, uh, if you're doing like 3D printing, right? But for us, that's not, there's actually not really, not a problem with these, right? We can always stick in them later on. If it's not meant to be 3D printed, it's not really going to be non manifold in the way I would consider it for us. But you don't want to extrude non border edges. So edges that have two faces already connected to them, if you extrude them, you'll have three faces connected to that edge. It creates non manifold geometry, and that causes all kinds of problems, right? In fact, if I do it, Control E for extrude, see how it's kind of flat and pulls weird? If I was to try to do a loop cut through it, see how it stops? It just causes all kinds of problems if you extrude a non-border edge, right? It's going to create non-manifold non geometry in the context that we're talking about, right? Technically, some people would view this as non-manifold if it's for 3D printing, but we're not 3D printing, so 
But these are border edges, right? Because this is an edge, and you'll see there's no other geometry. That edge is only connected to one face. So if we extrude that, it actually basically creates just normal structure. This can be an amazing trick and technique for building spaceships, cars. In fact, um, when we do our Modeling B stuff next semester, right? Um, some of you guys might be in the class, some of you guys might not be, right? Um, we're actually going to use this to build a spaceship. Um, but we could use it here a bit for gear and armor also. So I'm going to do Control E for extrusion. So just extrude still, not a new tool. We're just using it on border edges now, right? Edges that at the border, right? There's no more geometry. So if I middle mouse click drag, right? You see how it actually creates a new face. Remember, holding down middle mouse button and dragging, particularly when using industry compatible, is your view extrude or your view move or your view rotate. I can just hit E for rotate, maybe a middle mouse button, do a little view rotate. Control E for extrusion again, middle mouse button. Maybe middle mouse button drag again. And of course, E for rotate, middle mouse to rotate it a little bit. It's kind of pu uh, pulling out there a little bit, so maybe alt left mouse button to rotate our camera, you know, middle mouse to move it in a little bit. So you can kind of make those adjustments. Move, rotate, if you want to use tweak, you can. Control E for extrusion. So there's often a kind of a bit of just adjusting it as we work. Control E for extrusion, middle mouse button. And of course, we can rotate it. And you see how view rotate can be super useful, right? Remember, middle mouse button automatically does the rotate or the move based on the view instead of the handles. You just hold down middle mouse button. Works for your view extrude also. But I'm just extruding this border edge, right? Control E. Middle mouse button, I'm hit W to move it out a little bit. Control E for extrude. And as we work, right, maybe a little bit of view rotate. Remember E for rotate. Middle mouse button will do the view feature for it. If you want to use tweak, you can of course come in here and tweak some of these edges out a little bit to make the adjustments for shape. Remember your tweak tool's right there, Q toggles through it. And then I'm going to do some more Control E for extrude, middle mouse drag, E for rotate, middle mouse, right, to kind of drag that a little bit, start to bring those in a bit more. And now what I could do is, remember, you have bridge, right? There is a bridge feature in Blender. So if I have, and you want to always do it the same number of edges, the same number of edges, or same number of faces, same number of faces. If you don't, it'll create a bunch of triangles, right? So it'll still bridge, but you'll see it's bridging and making a bunch of triangles, which is not ideal for us. So you always want to do same number to same number. One to one, two to two, three to three. Right? It doesn't matter what the number is, but it should be the same number to same number. In this case, I have one and one, and they're on different parts of the model. So if I right click, because I'm in edge mode, right? Two for edge mode. If I right click, Edge context menu, and you'll see there's bridge edge loops. In this case, I've got a quick key assigned to that because it's a pretty useful tool. And that'll create new geometry between those connecting them up. And now you can see that we've got kind of a bit of kind of a strap going up here, right? So it's one of those neat things that you could actually do to build clothing, right? You can duplicate some faces off to kind of start off some of the clothing that you want, right? But then if you need to kind of build some other parts that don't exactly follow the geometry, yes, retopo could work that way, but also just extruding border edges and bridging border edges works. And even in speed retopo, you'd often be using those tools to achieve a similar effect as well. They would just stick to the surface better. But that's, you have to apply a shrink back modifier, you have to turn on your snap faces feature, um, and those can help. So that gives us that. Now, in this case, like I said, I want to do some other gear uh, later on this week, but I figure we could also just stick in this right now, right? This is paper thin. We don't really want this to be paper thin, right? So in particular, since we want to thicken this whole set of connected polygons, I can just go to three for face mode, select a face, 
Remember, select, linked, right brackets to click key for it. And even though technically there is a solidify tool which would do this, and that would work for, say, if you didn't want to extrude, every, if you didn't want to thicken all of these faces, but maybe just some of them on this connected stuff, that would work great. Although it would, you'd have a kind of a weird seam down the center. In this case, since this is, these are all connected, you can actually just right click to bring up your face context menu and extrude faces along normals, right? We've seen this before. Remember, this will extrude, but since it's all of the connected faces, it'll be really smart about knowing you want to thicken, right? It'll extrude them out, but it'll also kind of leave the originals flipped so you have a fully solidified, thickened object. So extrude along faces along normals in many contexts actually is a great thicken tool. Uh, and because it's moving the faces along normal direction, it kind of poofs everything out properly. So I'll extrude faces along normal direction. I can push it out a little bit. And you see how that's a super quick way to kind of thicken your gear. And it doesn't have any problems down the center like solidify would. Um, of course, it needs all the polygons to be selected that are connected. If not, it'll just do a regular extrusion, right? If I had some of these not selected and I did that, you just get normal extrude along normal direction instead of thicken. That's when you'd have to use solidify, right? So there's a specific tool that would allow you to do that. Um, and it, it's, it's pretty good, but it does kind of have its one drawback, particularly kind of around center seams. But that you can always delete and fix up pretty easily also. And that is how you could start to build clothing and gear for this character, right? How you could separate stuff into their own objects, We'll build a little more gear, and of course, we'll review lecture this stuff again. But it gives you a great rundown of uh, tools you mostly know, but seeing them in new contexts. All right, so I'm going to stop recording on that one.